Listen while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. This is Bill Foreman speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of their own store names. They've done that because they recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Rexall's brand new multivitamin product, Formula V10, is an excellent example. For Formula V10 is a really pleasant tasting, really easy to take product that helps prevent vitamin and iron deficiencies. The recommended daily dosage supplies twice the minimum requirement of vitamin B1, five times the requirement of iron, plus minimum daily requirements of A, D, and B2, plus red crystalline vitamin B12. Ask for pleasant-tasting formula V10. That's V as in vitamin. V10 at Rexall drugstores everywhere. The stores with the orange and blue sign. Good health to all from Rexall. Now, your Rexall family druggist brings you a transcribed half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Oh, Oh, gee, Diamond, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? Oh, no, 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 Seymour. I feel great. Oh. Who needs teeth? Come to think of it, though, I might be more comfy down here if you'd lift this desk off my chest. Oh, yeah, sure. There there you go. Oh, oh, well, thanks. thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you over. Uh, Sorry, forget it. Forget it. I I enjoy having my chest crushed as much as the next guy. Okay. Now, the throw I'm going to show you now is called a Japanese shoulder toss. Uh, Look, uh, Seymour, you've convinced me. Judo is a wonderful sport. I... I didn't realize what I'd been missing all these years. I, I, I love this sport, judo. Now, what'll it be, canasta or old maid? What? How about hopscotch? Oh, come on, come on. Uh, let me show you just one more throw, huh? Not even if it was with a beanbag. Hey, maybe some wrestling holes in. I know a lot of wrestling stuff. Must be some trick you'd like me to try. No, 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 Seymour. I, I, I really don't believe I... Well, come to think of it, yes, I... There is. A wonderful little trick. Huh? You get yourself a nice long rope, throw it high up into the air. Yeah. And then real quick, you climb way, way up to the top and just disappear. Oh, that's nuts. Oh, I defeated it, huh? What? No. Diamond Detective Agency. Brains, experience, enthusiasm, delirium tremens. Rick, don't be so silly. I might have been a prospective client. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. But you'll have to admit, I I have got brains and enthusiasm and good looks and a dynamic personality. And my father can beat up your father. Rick, you're incorrigible. No, I'm right here in New York. Oh, that's just dandy. Now, will you please tell me what we're doing tonight? Oh, that, honey, is a long story. I'm comfortable. Well, remember the day we walked into Gimbel's basement and I bumped into an old schoolmate of mine who was demonstrating barbells? (laughs) I remember how funny you looked when he goaded you into picking up that big weight. Yeah, (laughs) And how hysterical it was when he had to carry me upstairs to the chiropractor. I carried you just like a baby, too, didn't I? Who's that? Now, that's him, Muscles. He bicycled all the way over from Jersey just to tell me his ideas on self-defense. He bicycled? Oh, he was dressed for it. Top hat, tail, sneakers. Now, what are you talking about? One of his cleverest ideas was that I'd treat him to dinner tonight if he could knock me to the floor in less than 30 seconds. So? Gave him the battle of his life. Seven seconds. The point is, where can we eat where they'll poison his food? Hey, I heard that. It's all right, Seymour. You can order small helpings. Rick. Let's make it Leon's, baby. Okay? Must we? Will you be an angel and meet us at Leon's? I'll meet you at Leon's. Eight o'clock sharp. Rick, if you keep me waiting. If I keep you waiting, you have a lock of my hair. Eight o'clock. Sharp. Well, I'll see you at Leon's at eight o'clock, huh? I'll bring lots of money, because I'm a guy that can really eat. Oh, I bet you are. Well, if you arrive there before I do, Seymour... Starting on the ferns by the front door. Seymour was too stupid to go away mad, but at least he went away. 
I settled back in my chair and made a half-hearted attempt to figure a face out of the water spot on the ceiling. When I woke up, it was five o'clock, and I hated myself for the indulgence. As I sat there, thinking how much my mouth tasted like an old motorman's glove, I heard a noise in the hall on the other side of my door. Well, good afternoon. Something I can do for... Uh, juice bar. Juice bar. Uh, hey. <laughs> He fell face forward into the pool of blood at his feet, like a wino who'd stumbled into a fountain of muscatel. Funny, isn't it, how an ice pick loses all its homey appeal when it's sticking out of a guy's back? The ice pick this guy was wearing was no exception. I didn't know how long he'd been leaning against my door, but one thing was certain, it was long enough to die. I put in a call to 5th Precinct Police Headquarters and Lieutenant Levinson, and ten minutes later, my office was full of badges. And you have no idea who he is, huh, Rick? Not the biggest, Walt. Well, a checkup shows you're the only office in the building that's been open after two. So he must have been on his way to see you when he got it from behind. Uh, maybe he was delivering ice and just happened to fall on his ice pick. Otis. Yeah? Otis, now that you've solved it, why don't you go down to the glue factory and let them put you up in nice little glass bottles? Oh. Well, anyway, he has a billfold in his pocket. That ought to tell us something. How about a look, Fatty? Huh? Oh, oh, sure. Here. Hmm. Quite a card collector, wasn't he? Quite. Gold furriers, the copper room, O'Toole's diner. It's lousy food. Got Tomain once from their cheesecake. I remember. I got Tomain just watching you eat it. I resent that. And I accept your apology. Yeah. Huh? Where's that green card from? This one? Yeah. Mm, the Apollo Health Club. Hey, that's right down the street. Nothing with the old boy's name on it, though. Afraid not. However, something tells me you'll get that from the old boy's fingerprints. Let's hope so. Ah, a salute this afternoon to you, sir. Welcome to the Apollo Health Club. May I be of assistance? I'd like to get a massage. Splendid. <laughs> Performs wonders after a fatiguing day. A veritable balm to the chafed tissues of the body. But will it cure snow blindness? I beg your pardon? No, oh, just ignore me. I'm a little chewed up today. I assume you're referring to a state of mind. Well, not altogether. Got a kink in my back that isn't entirely mental. Well, at least you've come to the proper place. A measure of skillfully applied anatomical science will regenerate the damaged musculature in no time. Oh, Bayern... Mr. O'Brien, front, please. One of my best masseurs. Oh, you're the owner, huh? <laughs> I am, sir. Let me introduce myself. Emerson Van Arter, Doctor of Anatomical Science. Richard Diamond. A pleasure. A uh, nice layout you have here. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Five years of assiduous study in Switzerland under the illustrious Dr. von Seppeville has given me a boundless knowledge of the human mechanism. As a consequence, of course... Can uh, you call me, Doctor? Uh, uh, oh, yes, yes. Oh, by, oh by, I did. Uh, Mr. Diamond here wishes a massage. Sure, fine. I'll speak to you later, Mr. Diamond. Right this way, sir. Remember, the blood tore the heart, always tore the heart. A real private detective, huh? Uh, too private, judging from last month's receipts. <laughs> hey, you know you really rubbed that kink out of my back? Good. Don't know if you noticed it, but I was doing all my rubbing with my right arm. Tore a muscle on my left shoulder this morning. Really put it out of commission. Oh, that's too bad. Speaking of things being out of commission reminds me. There's a body down at the morgue I'd like you to take a look at. Guy might have been a client of yours. Well, what makes you think that? Had a card from the Apollo Club in his billfold. Oh? Uh, when could you come down? Uh, how about tonight? We close here at 10. Fine. Make it, uh, what about 10.30? Know where the morgue is? Yeah. Now, how'd this guy die, anyway? Well, somebody hit their ice pick in his spinal column. No kidding. Yeah. The corpse is a little dark-complexioned man. Kinky hair, glasses, bald spot on the top of his head. Hey, that description fits a guy who comes in here every night around closing time. Fanatic on diet, he buys wheat germ from us by the case. Know his name or where he lives? Oh, I know that he's... Uh, pardon the intrusion, gentlemen, but I'm afraid I'll have to ask Mr. O'Brien to hire you down to the gymnasium. Oh, sure, right away, sir. Uh, here's a fresh towel, Mr. Diamond. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt like this, but we are a trifle understaffed, and expediting the evening rush is something of a problem. Well, all right. Talk to you later tonight, Mr. Diamond. All right. Oh, hey, in case you can't make it, give me a buzz at Leon's restaurant. I'll be there till a quarter of nine. Right. Uh... 
Monsieur Diamond. Hello. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Hello, Leon. Par ici, par ici. Yes. Which translated in English means? Right this way. <laughs> <laughs> Both my guests arrive? Oui. First the young lady, then a few minutes later the uh, gymnast. Uh, but, uh, uh, Monsieur Diamond, a telephone call is waiting for you. Oh, thanks, thanks, Leon. Hello, Diamond speaking. Hello, Mr. Diamond. This is Red O'Byron down at the Apollo Club. Oh, yeah, O'Byron. Well, Hey, listen, you got to come down here right away. I really stumbled into something. Yeah? What's that? Can't tell you over the phone. Just get down here. Drop everything and get down here. Hurry. Look, uh, uh, Red, I'm right in the middle of the... Hello? 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 Oh. Hey, kids, i got to run. Be back in a few minutes. Just where do you think you're going? A place called the Apollo Club. Yeah? Well, how about my dinner? Uh, go, go right ahead and order. I'll be back. Oh, uh, by the way, Seymour, that potato salad on the child's plate is a real deal for a quarter. And Helen? Yes, Rick? Shoot the kill if he even suggests wrestling. I walked out of Leon's, flagged down a cab, and spent the trip back to the Apollo Club, wondering what Red O'Byron was so worked up about and why he'd hung up on me. As my cab started to swing in toward the curb, I got that lousy feeling again, and I decided... Definitely, it was not one of Leon's martinis, but rather the large white ambulance parked in front of the Apollo Health Club. I was halfway up the steps of the club when Dr. Van Arthur appeared in the doorway. Oh, oh good evening, Mr. Diamond. This, this is terrible, terrible. What is? We, we've had an accident. Red O'Byron? Uh, yes. Oh, terrible. I, like losing his son. Losing? He's dead? Yes. He, he, he was performing a handstand on the rings in the gymnasium when he slipped and fell. Broke his neck. Now, Rexall's pharmaceutical laboratories announce a brand new vitamin product, Rexall 5X Vitamins. They're called 5X because each tablet supplies five times the daily requirement of all vitamins with known minimums. What's more... Each tablet contains five micrograms of red crystalline B12. Right now, your Rexall family druggist is introducing this new vitamin product with a special offer. He will give you, free of extra cost, a 10-day trial supply of 5X vitamins when you purchase the regular bottle of 50 tablets. Try 5X vitamins for 10 days. And if you're not completely satisfied, simply return the unopened bottle of 50 and your full purchase price will be refunded. Ask for the regular 50-tablet bottle and 10-day trial bottle of Rexall 5X Vitamins. Both just $6.95 at Rexall drugstores everywhere. The stores with the orange and blue sign. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Well, hello, Otis. Is the lieutenant around? Yeah, he's around, so what? Otis, did you ever think how silly you'd look hanging from your thumbs? Ah, oh, go soak your head. You mean that's how you shrunk yours? Ooh. Well, now, isn't that a coincidence? Is it? I was just thinking how peaceful it is around the precinct when you're not. Yeah. You shut up, you. Uh, you tell him, Fatty. How would you like to... I'd like a little information, if you don't mind. I'd like you to see what facts you can scare up on the guy who runs the Apollo Health Club. Name is Van Arthur. If I remember right, the stiff we hauled away in front of your office today had a card from the Apollo Club in his billfold. You remember right. And we found out his name was Rudy Lubin. Narcotics has a file on him that goes forever. How about the ice pick? Any fingerprints? None. Well, that's always a help. I should say. Personally, I think Otis did it. Think I did what? You see, Walter, typical pathological reaction. What do you mean? Oh, don't worry, Otis. We won't let them hang you, right, Walt? Right. Not as long as we have a rope and a tree. No. Hey, what's up? Who are you calling? Leon's restaurant. Helen's over there breathing with her diaphragm. And Seymour... Oh, you don't know him, but he's tearing phone books apart. Good evening, Leon's. Oh, hello, Leon. This is Richard Diamond. My friend's still there? We. Oui. They are waiting for you, no? They're waiting for me, yes. Let me speak to the noisy one with the biceps, will you? Oui, bien entendu. What's all this about? It's about a guy who got stabbed in front of my door. A masseur named O'Byron who got his neck broken doing tricks on the rings and... Something that O'Byron mentioned earlier. Hello, hello. 
Uh, Seymour? Uh, where are you, anyway? We've been waiting an hour. That's not the point. The point is, I want you to listen to me. Could a guy do a handstand on the rings if he had a torn muscle in his shoulder? Are you kidding? I'm very serious. Heck no, he couldn't. It's impossible. Shoulder muscles are the ones that do all the work. Deltoids, trapezius, upper pecs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Look, Seymour, you got to do me a favor. Meet me in front of the Apollo Health Club as soon as you can get there. Well, how about your girlfriend? Tell her to wait there till I come for her. Well, okay, then. Only, what are we going to do? Trap or murder her. I hung up, assured Lieutenant Levinson that I was just going to do a little reconnaissance work and then left for the Apollo Club. Seymour was waiting when my cab drew up in front. I explained to him the part I wanted him to play. Just leave it to me. If this doctor's a phony, I'll find out for you. Let's go. <laughs> Hello again, Mr. Diamond. Doctor? I just talked to the O'Byron boys' family. Oh, it was heartrending, ab- absolutely heartrending. I... <laughs> I almost broke down. No, you will before it's over. Hmm? Like you to meet a friend of mine, Seymour Caper. Uh, uh, bless you, sir. What do you say, Doc? Seymour's been having a little trouble with his chest lately. I told him you were a doctor of... Uh, uh, anatomical science. Yeah, and that you could undoubtedly do him some good. Very kind of you. There's something to do with my muscles here. You know anything about them? Muscles are what an anatomical scientist knows most about. Oh, swell, swell. The doctor studied all about muscles in Switzerland. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just what seems to be the trouble. Well, here's the deal, Doc. It all started the other day when I was working out with my barbells. I was doing an exercise for my trapezius when all of a sudden I got a spasm in my tensor fascia. So I bent over to set the barbell down on the floor, and that's when the pain hit me. First in my pectoralis minor, then in my intercostals, and finally in my diaphragm. A kind of spasmodic contraction like when you get the hiccups. Only, no hiccups. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, 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 a a spasmodic contraction. Of the diaphragm. (laughs) Only no hiccups. And then my abdominals began tightening until I could hardly expel my ribcage. Oh. That's when I called Diamond here. Uh, I see. Yes, yes, quite naturally. Uh, If you'll pardon me a moment, I'll see if I... Uh, Yeah, but wait a minute. I haven't told you about my rhomboids. His rhomboids seem to be completely out of whack. Beg your pardon? Well, it must be either my rhomboids or my dorsal spinalis. Awful pain right between my shoulder blades. What do you figure it is, Doc? Well, actually, a hasty diagnosis isn't uh, feasible. I I really couldn't... uh, Uh, Yeah, but uh, you just put your hand on my left rhomboid and feel how naughty it is, huh? Hey, left rhomboid. Yeah, go ahead, feel it. It's right under the middle trapezius, Doc. You know where that is. Please, please, Seymour. Don't insult the doctor. Any old quack knows where that is. Uh, uh, Yes, certainly. uh, Middle trapezius. Uh, uh, Oh, oh, great Scott. I'd almost forgotten I left a client under the sun lamp. <laughs> Pardon me, gentlemen. I'll be back in a, much, uh, a moment. Hmm. Have a hunch he's heading straight for an anatomy chart. Yeah, you're not kidding. That guy's as funny as the title he uses. Doctor of anatomical science. My glorious. Mine too. Come on. I took Seymour by his rhomboid and led him out onto the street, down to the middle of the block and up three flights to my office. While I did my thinking, Seymour did his push-ups. 302. 303. Well, Seymour, we know three things. Oh, Byron couldn't have been exercising on the rings with an injured shoulder. Five right. And the doctor's a phony. Six right. Then the doctor is a, is a front for something that's important enough to kill people over. Three hundred and right. Eight. As a consequence, you and I are burglars. Nine right. What? Starting as soon as the Apollo Club closes. But... You mean we're going to bust into the joint? We're going to bust into the joint or flatten your head in the attempt. Seymour, you opened that window beautifully. Uh, Thanks. Remind me to autograph your biceps later. Hey, uh, this detective business is dangerous, ain't it? Oh, yes, yes, but think of the advantages. Long hours, no time for meals, and on a good day, a guy can pick up as high as two or three hundred bullets in his back. I don't like it. Go on, crawl in. Okay, okay. Don't push! I followed Seymour in, and we waited a minute for our eyes to get accustomed to the darkness. Then we moved cautiously down the stairway to the first floor. I had no idea what I was looking for, but Dr. Van Arthur's office was the first place where I tried to find it. I had a door's locked. You want it opened? Well, of course I do, Seymour. 
Use your head. Okay. Seymour would be pulling plywood out of his scalp for the next week, but it got us in. I took the place apart, but came up with a big fat nothing. So he left the office and headed down the hall toward the back of the building. Hey, look. What's the matter? It's a fruit juice bar. Oh, boy, am I thirsty. Well, go mix yourself up a... Juice bar. Juice bar, that's it. Yeah, good stiff bell of celery juice, No, man. no, no. This is what the little man who was stabbed outside my office was gasping about when he died. A juice bar. Come on. Huh. Nothing but juice. Oh, I wonder what's in this cupboard under the counter. Is it locked? Yeah. Think you can pull it open? <laughs> Just watch me. Ah, you see? Say more. Yeah? Will you marry me? I'll give you a belt and a solar plexus. Later, huh? Right now, let's see what's in this cupboard. Uh, you got a match? I don't smoke. That's all right. I found one. Well, what do you know about that? Nothing but cans of wheat germ. Hey, you know what that stuff is, don't you? I know that the masseur who got killed here told me that the guy who died in front of my office bought it up by the case. Hand me a can, will you? Sure. Here. His stuff is full of vitamins, you know. You want a handful? Oh, no, thanks. Yeah. Well, it must be some extra special brand. Never tasted anything like this before. Chew a little louder, Seymour. We can dance to it. Hey. <laughs> hey. That really hits the spot, man. Hey, you want to wrestle? Oh, quiet, Seymour. <laughs> you know what, boy? I can fly. Seymour. I can fly, I tell you, see? Oh, man, do I ever love to fly. While Seymour stood there flapping his arms, I stuck my nose into the can he was holding. Uh-huh. Once you've smelled opium, you can always recognize the aroma, even when it's mixed with wheat germ. I was trying to decide what to do with Seymour when he slid slowly to the floor under the counter and rocked out. I loosened his collar and then started for a telephone. Leaving, Mr. Detective. Uh, wow. Doctor, working late? <laughs> I'm glad I arrived in time to offer you a drink of fruit juice. Well, thanks loads, but I'm driving. Where you're going, Mr. Detective, the weather is too hot for diving. Now, isn't that a nasty thing for a guy who sticks ice picks in people to say? Oh, that was a most unpleasant experience, I assure you. It's just that Mr. Lubin began demanding a little too high a percentage for distributing my uh, <laughs> health foods. Even went so fast to threaten me with exposure. So you grabbed up an ice pick from your juice bar and followed him out of the club. Mm -hmm. I doubt if he ever knew what hit him. Oh, I bet he had a hunch. Well, huh? I I perceive that you've sampled my wheat germ. No, oh, I opened a can or two. Personally, I never touched the stuff without bananas and cream. You've made the same unfortunate discovery that Red O'Byron made, Mr. Detective. Oh, that's why he called me at Leon's. Yes, and that's also why I had to resort to the unsportsmanlike expedient of luring him to the balcony of the gymnasium and then pushing him over head first. I was about to call the doctor a particularly dirty name when Seymour's hulking shoulders loomed up behind the juice bar, not over three feet from where the doctor was standing. Doctor, you're wrong. Seymour is not a sissy. What? I don't think you could beat up Seymour with one hand. That's what. Mr. Diamond, I'm afraid you're asking to be shot. Yeah, well, just to try it. Who said... <laughs> I'll teach him to call somebody who knows how to fly a sissy. Still here, though, huh? Ah, oui, oui, but very angry. Look, Leon, you got to do something for me. Oui? Tell the violinist to get his big, fat Stradivarius over to where she's sitting. And quick. Oui, immediately. Hello, Miss Asher. Oh, come on, sweetie. I've had a rough night subduing murderers, opium eaters. The least you could do is say hello. Hello. I, uh, like that song, don't you? Look, I know all about you and your little violin bit. Huh? I saw Leon pointing us out to the violinist. He did? Mm-hmm. And where, may I ask, is little Seymour? Little Seymour ate too many goodies. He's having his stomach pumped. 
Oh, now that's sweet. I think so. I think the song is nice, too. I think you should sing it, too. I think I should, too. Hold me close and hold me fast The magic spell you cast This is la vie en When you kiss me, heaven sighs And though I close my eyes I see la vie en When you press me to your heart I'm in a world apart A world where roses bloom And when you speak, angels sing from above Everyday words seem to turn into love songs Give your heart and soul to me And life will always be La vie Nothing? Hmm? I won't say. Want to feel my biceps? All right. Well? Nothing. Here's a way to lose up to five pounds a week and lose where it shows. Yes, friends... I'm talking about the new Anne Delafield reducing plan. Today, there's simply no reason for any woman, or man either, to be handicapped by ugly fat. With the scientific Anne Delafield reducing plan, losing weight is easy. It's fun. You don't starve. You don't count calories. There are no drugs. No unbalanced dieting. Why put up with those dangerous extra pounds a moment longer? Ask for the Anne Delafield reducing plan today at any Rexall drugstore. And overweight men, here's wonderful news for you. Rexall has just introduced a brand new men's product for the first time anywhere, the Delafield Reducing Plan for Men. Look young, feel young, stay young for your age with a plan tailor-made for you at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Good health to all from Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and was written by Harvey Easton with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Dick Powell directed the RKO production Split Second, which is now in release. And his latest film appearance was in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer award-winning The Bad and the Beautiful. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Arthur Q. Bryan, Wilms Herbert, Bill Conrad, Jay Novello, and Dan O'Herlihy. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Sunday at this time when Rick's All Drug Products again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Now, enjoy quick, cooling relief from sunburn with Rexall Sunburn Cream. It's a new, soothing lotion that actually forms a protective film over the skin. Spreads better. Stays on longer than ordinary sunburn remedies. Take the burn out of sunburn. Try Rexall Sunburn Cream. It's at Rexall drugstores everywhere. This is the CBS Radio Network.